Because remember, that's rainwater. We live 100% off rainwater. So the girls are going to drink rainwater as well. Collect all the rainwater off that barn over there. Man, this stuff just cuts right through you. That's one of the things we want to talk about today is if you guys are living on grid, we got a lot of tips we can give you so you can manage if the power goes out on you. You see some yahoos are shooting up these transformers, almost, you know, forcing you to be on, you know, a problem with having electricity. And then you have these natural occurrences uh, with the weather. A branch could fall, a tree could fall, take out your power. I always like to check on them a couple times in this bad weather, make sure they're staying fed. That's one way they're keeping warm, right? Is they're having the food and the water, and that's keeping them warm nonstop. So they're situated. Now I'm gonna help you guys get situated <laughs> and explain to you. Yeah, I was just saying that that's 100% rainwater, gravity fed, and that's why we bought those frost free hydrants. There's a little weep hole down at the bottom of that tube and it lets all the water out and then whenever we need the water you just lift up the handle and the gravity just pushes it out. A lot of people have those for their wells and stuff at their places. Yeah, this is not the weather that you want to be without electricity. But I'm going to show you guys right now for a very small investment be able to keep warm inside of your house if your electricity goes out. That's probably about the main thing. If you can't have a stove or a fireplace or something, you're going to want to know this trick here. Quite possibly could save your life. I'll tell you what, in this kind of weather, it won't take long to run into some serious problems if you don't have heat. Hold on, let me get my boots off. I don't want to muck up the floors. Just did a video on the install of this fireplace. Man, is that working good. Pro tip, if you have a fireplace inside your house and you're burning wood, always leave a kettle of water on top of your um, you know, stove or fireplace or something to put that moisture back into the air because the wood heat just sucks all the moisture out. So in case you're new around here, my wife and I, we live in a log cabin that we built ourselves and we have for the last 14 years. We heat with wood 100%. We grow 90% of our own food. We live 100% off rainwater. We poop in buckets <laughs> and we are the ungovernable and we teach people how to live this lifestyle, this more self-sufficient lifestyle here on social media for free. So all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and uh, give us a thumbs up if you're finding this information valuable. We've been out here for a while um, and we've had to use different heating sources. I've had barrel stoves, we have a wood cook stove next door, we have the stove that you just saw in here to keep us warm, but we've also used propane as a source of heat and you can as well, even if you live on grid, and you should really look into getting something like this in case the power goes out. Everyone's well aware that some people have shot transformers out and people were without power for four or five days. Imagine being without power in the weather that you just saw me outside. It's about 12 degrees outside Fahrenheit. The wind's blowing at about 30 to 50 miles an hour, <laughs> and you would not want to be without power or definitely heat in this kind of element, okay? So this is why I wanted to do this video real quick is to share this information with you guys so it can maybe plant that seed of preparedness and maybe you'll look into spending $140 is about what this um, unit costs here. I'm gonna explain to you what goes on here, how it operates, and then I don't have a link for you guys. We're not Amazon affiliates. Um, I won't tell you why, but you can probably guess why if you've been watching our videos. <laughs> so we don't have any links. We're not trying to make money off of you, but we, what we, our goal is, okay, 
sorry for the stutter there, but our goal is to help you guys be more prepared and to not rely on the system so much that at least you can rely on yourself a little bit and even have a backup. So this is called the Big Buddy Mr. Heater. I talked about this in yesterday's video when I showed the install of the fireplace that you just saw. We actually just installed that fireplace just in time for this big weather coming in. So that was perfect timing. One of the reasons why, or the reason why I put that in is so I wouldn't have to buy the propane, but this is a fantastic backup source for your home for $140 for a peace of mind that you will have heat if the grid goes down in the winter time. Big Buddy, Mr. Heater. This is the biggest one that they have. Inside of here are some ceramic tiles, I guess is what it is. I'm gonna show you how it operates. It works off of a propane that you can get for your barbecue grill. So if you spend the 140 bucks, you'll have to get this attachment hose, which is probably another 15 or 20. And then you'll probably have this barbecue propane grill laying around your house already attached to your barbecue, right? Otherwise, you can pick up one of these. Um, you know, they vary in prices all over the place, so I can't really tell you how much it would cost you to save your life <laughs> with the propane, but definitely this is about $140, and they make them a little bit smaller. This is fine for five, 600 square feet, no problem. Couple rooms or a big room, no problem, okay? Now I'll show you guys how it operates. You just turn on the propane tank. And then this has an igniter switch built into it. You push it down and you turn it. One, two, three. You know, a couple times. You see that pilot light just lit? And then you turn it to the number one position. And the ceramic tile kind of catches fire. See that? It's kind of hard to see right now, but this tile right here has heat on it and it's kind of a off, you know, red color. Okay. If you go to the second setting, it gets a little hotter. See it turning red? So that's your maximum heat out of one tile. And then if you go to high, it'll light up the second tile. And then you'll see that one turn red as well. This is the Milwaukee heat gun that I have. It tells you the temperature with an infrared dot. See the dot? See the dot on the floor? So around the heater, the floor reads 73 degrees. So you can definitely see with both panels lit, this thing puts off a lot of heat. Usually I'll run it on low actually. Medium is super rare. Low with a tank like that will last me probably like three, four days at least. And just to give you an idea for comparison from this stove to that one, we'll start off at the floor. Right, we're still kind of see how close we are to the stove so we're getting a little bit of heat residue off of that and now we hit the stove Just for the record, this Big Buddy heater is safe for indoor use, and it is okay to have a propane tank inside. You just don't want to have it by any heat source. You know, that's maybe a little close. <laughs> this is just for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> Please consult the directions and follow all state, local, and federal regulations. <laughs> don't do it. But that's how we run it. 
we leave it in here. Some people were asking if you need to crack a window. You don't need to crack a window. It might be suggested or you know recommended that you get a CO2, a carbon monoxide detector inside and then just set it in the quarter somewhere. You can actually get battery operated ones now and we keep one in the house there and one over here. And so that's a recommendation for you to have, right? You can actually use this for your full-time heat source. It's not very economical because it's kind of expensive to buy the propanes. That's why I switched over to the wood stove because we have wood everywhere. We live out by the forest. Now, on the side of the Big Buddy, there's a compartment. And this compartment has a valve right here, a gauge, a pressure gauge, regulator they call it, actually, <laughs> a regulator, right? And what you can do is you can screw your propane right into that, your hose, right? Just like that. You can screw your hose right into there and then take it to your secondary source or they're designed to be used with the Coleman propane tanks and then you just take this tank and you just screw it right on here that's why this whole compartment's here and then you just lay it in there you turn it down and then you shut the door on the compartment and your tank is inside of there now that Coleman propane tank, you can pick that up at Walmart. Um, you can have it mailed to your place if you do the Amazon stuff. They're, they're okay to get. Now, the, it's just like anything, the smaller that you get in package size, the more it's gonna cost. So we had that going for a little bit. We bought like a six pack of those things and it goes through those pretty fast. Like if you have both sides on, you might make it one day. Okay, so that's why I switched over and got the hose for the bigger propane tank so we could get more days out of it. There's your pro tip. Small, expensive, larger quantity, more economical. Now remember I told you guys that we live 100% off of the rainwater and we keep that rainwater stored above ground in two 1500 gallon tanks. I'm gonna take you there right now and show you how we use this big buddy mister heater to keep our water flowing off grid in these sub-zero temperatures. Come on. That a girl. Pardon me, ma'am. Come on now. I said to move. Don't get spooky. Fifteen hundred gallons and fifteen hundred gallons. And that tank right there is the first flush. And for a long time we had no problems getting through winter. I had a wood stove over here. And then we started getting these super sub-zero temperatures for a week to two weeks at a time. So I foamed in this whole room and made it airtight. And now we can heat it with a candle pretty much. So I'll leave that little buddy heater on inside this room and it'll keep the ball valves from freezing. The tanks aren't really an issue. You know, the tanks aren't gonna really freeze up. It takes a long time to freeze up 1,500 gallons. The issue are the ball valves down here where the water gets turned on and off. That one's on because that water is shared with that tank. They fill up simultaneously. But on any of your water storage tanks, if those ball valves freeze, then your tank's gonna be useless. So if you're keeping those IBC totes for some extra water around your place or something and you get freezing temperatures, but there's no, you know, what can you do? I mean, it's pretty much you have to drain them because you don't want to mess those ball valves up. Thank you guys. I just wanted to put the heat in the water room because we're getting down to 30 below. So like I said, right there is probably about the best $140 life insurance policy you could have for getting through winter time, living on the grid, for sure. And if you guys have parents and you're worried about your parents, it's just super easy to operate, you know, and maybe get one of these things for their house, just for peace of mind to know that they'd be able to fire up some kind of heat if their electric goes out. If you guys got any questions, leave them down below. I do not have a link for you. But Google and Amazon and your friends will help guide you the way. It's called the Mr. Heater Big Buddy. And like I said, they make several different types. So maybe type in Mr. Heater and hunt down the type that you think will be best for you. That's the biggest one, the Big Buddy. And it does a really good job, right? If you guys uh, 
like the video make sure you give it a thumbs up if you're new around here and you haven't subscribed to our channel yet or maybe you're just trolling through our videos and never subscribed please hit that subscribe button and that way you'll be informed of all the videos that we put up because we're going to really start putting out some good information for you guys uh, that may help in this case maybe even save your life <laughs> all right you guys have a warm one out there merry christmas and we'll see you guys on the next video This video was brought to you by Plain and Simple Chocolate Tea from Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. The weather outside is frightful. A cup of chocolate tea is so delightful. Made from the husks of roasted cacao beans, it has a chocolatey aroma, yet tastes like an herbal tea. This beverage is rich in mood-enhancing theobromine, the perfect replacement or addition to your morning cup of coffee. You can find it at offgridwithdougandstacy.com. Plain and simple chocolate tea makes me happy.